Hello everyone, today we're going to be following up yesterday's video because I had a lot of people PM me their issues and stuff that they're dealing with as well. So I'm going to be using an example that happened recently in my case and how I dealt with it. So about two months ago, I had a dear family member pass away. So obviously I was devastated and it was quite unfortunate. Uh, they passed away because of cancer. There wasn't really much you could do about it because I basically just saw my family member slowly deteriorate due to cancer and said family member chose not to take any medical care. They didn't want any medical care. They just wanted to live their life and, you know, if it ends, it ends. That was basically their choice. So we respected their choice and, you know, they passed away soon after. I think it was five months after they were diagnosed with cancer. They lived an additional five months and then they, they passed away. And so how did I deal with the initial shock? So the initial shock, you never know when it's going to come, right? And so, so when you do receive the bad news, it just hits you right in the, right in the face, right in the heart. You know, you, you're, you're kind of in shock. And so what I did was I just kept myself busy doing something else for now because I knew that my brain, my body was not able to comprehend all the information or at least acknowledge the fact that my family member passed away. And so basically I just continued on with my day. I continued to do Blade and Soul. I streamed my, I streamed my raids. I continued to make videos. I kept myself busy so that my mind didn't have time to think about uh, my family member passing away. And I did this for about two weeks. So after two weeks, then I felt like, okay, my brain has sort of processed what's going on. My body has sort of understood, sort of accepted what's happening. Now it was time for some alone time, basically just self-reflection and seeing if I was able to accept the fact that my family member had passed. So this phase takes a long time, depending on who you are. If it was a distant relative that you weren't very close with, it's a lot easier to overcome it and just accept the fact that said family member passed away or said loved one, etc. However, if it is someone that's played a substantial part in your life and someone that's very important to you, then it obviously will take a lot longer. And I don't really have a step-by-step -step, uh, method of how I did it. All I did was kind of just tell myself over and over, look, they're gone. There's no way that I'm going to be getting them back. And this is life, right? It's that, that, that's life. I, I can't I can't turn back the clock I don't have a time machine and they're gone and it's very very difficult to accept that but at the end of the day you're going to have to accept the reality of what things are and how things are and your next step would be what can I do about it however in my case you know, family member is gone. There's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing you can do to get said family member back. And so the only thing that you end up realizing is, I guess I just gonna have to accept it, own it, and look at myself and try to improve myself and get over this uh, very unfortunate situation. And that's what I did. So I kept myself busy until I knew, okay, it's about time to do some self-reflection. I sat down. And I self-reflected and I said, okay, you know, am I ready to accept this? Am I ready to own this or not? If I wasn't, first time I wasn't, to be perfectly honest, I was just like, no, I don't accept the fact that my family member is dead. There's no way. That's not possible. That, that was my mentality. And I just refused to accept the fact that that has happened. And so if you are in that mental block or that mental state, just take more time off. Just distract yourself with something else and just take more time to let the body and let the mind slowly process it. Because, because everyone's mental capacity is different. Some people are very easy to accept things and some are very difficult and need a lot of convincing. And in my case, I wasn't able to accept the fact at the very beginning, so I needed more time. And in order to do that, I simply just, you know, stored it, stored that grief and that rage and that refusal 
that denial to accept the facts, I just put it in a corner of my mind. And I was like, I'll revisit that afterwards. And I basically continued on with my regular stuff, making Blade and Soul videos, keeping myself busy, hanging out with great people, just keeping my, keeping my mindset in a healthy place. And when I felt like, okay, I'm ready to tackle this problem one more time, then I went back and revisited the issue. And for the second time, I was able to accept the fact that my family member has passed away and there's nothing I can do about it. And once I was able to get over that initial anger, rage, what if I could have done this, what if I could have done that, once I got over all of those thoughts, then it was a lot more smoother because it was just like, okay, I've accepted the fact that family member is gone. So what's the next step? It's grieving. You need to, you need to get it out of your system. And there's no shame in crying, you know? I'm not going to cry in camera, obviously, because I find that very embarrassing. But I do take alone time to get it out of my system, to just cry, to grief, because that's normal. That's part of being human. And it's, uh, you know, you, you have to do it eventually, because just holding it in forever and ever and ever, eventually you're going to snap. And that's how I dealt with problems before. Uh, when I was in my teens, when I was in my early 20s, because of the nature of the industry I worked in, in the food and beverage industry and the entertainment industry, it was not a good idea to show your real feelings in front of a client. So you had to bottle up a lot of things. And eventually I did snap. And luckily I didn't snap in front of a client, but I snapped at a friend. And it was very uncalled for because I nearly severed a friendship with a very good friend because of this. And it wasn't even their fault. It was really just me bottling up so much stuff that I couldn't hold in any more of this raw rage and anger. And when I snapped, it was just like, it was so uncalled for. It was, it was over something really stupid too. It was over something like a cup of coffee that they didn't add milk in or something. And I was like, why didn't you add milk in it? And then it's something over really silly, something silly like that, okay? And then like, we didn't talk for like a year, two years. And in the end, I mustered up the courage to apologize. And after apology, you know, it took them more time, took them like another three months or six months before they accepted my apology. And that's, you know, it was just really uncalled for. And it was entirely my fault because I just needed to keep my emotions in check. I needed to know when to let out emotions and when to hold emotions. And this is when I really started working on emotional control. And that's why the current state, or meet the me right now, is much better at controlling emotion, at knowing when it's time to grieve, when it's time to hold, keep things in check, and, you know, just stuff like that. But going back to the topic at hand is when you're in that dark place and you're trying to get out, if you can do it by yourself, by all means, go ahead. But if you do need help, really reach out to people. Just talk to people. Uh, the funny thing is I have an easier time talking with random people or people not associated with the, with the situation I'm in. Because it's like, what, what do they know? They don't know anything about the situation. So I find it easier to talk to strangers. But uh, other people might find it easier to talk to family members. I don't like to talk to family members or talk to close friends about my issues because I feel like that would damage our relationship or it would influence our relationship. So the way that I've been self-medicating has always been talking with absolute strangers. And it's just like, oh, look, here's a fan that's also going through some issues. And we would just discuss and we'd just exchange ideas and talk, talk through our problems. And by doing that, I would feel a lot better because it's not like I'm dumping my entire life's problem on top of the stranger. It was like I give them a little bit of context. I tell them what the problem I'm struggling in. And maybe they also have a little bit of context of their issue. And we kind of problem solve together, you know, that way it feels like I'm helping you. You're helping me. And thus it's like equivalent trade sort of thing. And that's just been working for me. Of course, a lot of you guys out there have a lot more heavier problems. Uh, obviously, losing a family member to me is quite a big deal. However, I know 
there's got to be some of you guys out there that are probably suffering much more difficult problems. I remember when I was streaming the other day, there was a there was a viewer that told me that they had just lost their only family member and they're now living alone and they're struggling to just make ends meet. And that is definitely very, very difficult. So, you know, my heart definitely went out to that viewer and I tried to give as much advice as I could saying that, hey, man, you really need to get a stable income that, you know, your bodily needs should be your first priority. Make sure that you have a roof on top of your head. You've got food and water and just, you know, your basic needs are definitely going to be your priorities first. Once you've got that sorted out, then you can start working on all your other issues because without a roof on top of your head, without basic food, without basic water, you are pretty much in a very bad situation if, if that continues on. So that's definitely priority number one. But uh, yeah, do let me know in the comment section below or you can always private message me on uh, Discord if you guys have any problems. I'm more than happy to at least listen to your problems. I might not be able to solve your problems because I'm not a miracle worker, but I'm more than happy to listen to your issues. And if you need someone to talk about it, you know, we can just talk it through. Uh, I might be a little bit slow on the uptake because my Discord is usually pretty bombarded. It's usually with Blade and Soul questions, of course. Um, but still, just know that if you did private message me, I have read your message or I will get to read your message and I'll probably try to reply in the near future. Do let me know in the comment section below what else you'd like me to talk about. I'm quite enjoying talking about this. It's very therapeutic for me and it's sort of meditative to me it's very nice to just talk to the camera and just let go right so uh do let me know what else you'd like me to talk about because it's very nice to talk about these subjects it lets me open up a little bit but yeah anyway i'll see you guys in tomorrow's video bye bye what can i say except you're welcome for the heals the boosts the